Without further ado, I'd love to pass things over to Saren to go ahead and introduce himself and the game that we're about to be seeing. Go ahead and introduce this awesome classic. Uh, hey everybody, my name's Saren. Uh, I'm be running 70 Star for Super Mario 64 today, which is essentially like a glitchless any percent or like the closest thing you can get. Uh, there's a few like clips and stuff, but mostly everything's uh, by the book, a lot of movement. Not a lot of uh, cheating going on, so uh, I'm joined here in the booth with Odd Kate right now, uh, one of my longtime favorite friends. Uh, how you doing, Odd Kate? Doing pretty good. Excited to see uh, you run for this. Yeah, yeah. I'm hoping I'm, I'm not too nervous. My hands have been kind of sweating, so I try to keep it on uh, the DL. But uh, I don't know. Minor technical issues kind of helping me out here, making me feel at home. <laughs> uh, no, it's nervousness <clears throat> means that you you're really excited about it, and that you're really excited to. Make it be good tonight. So we're super psyched to see what you're about to show us. Nice. All right. So should I just start whenever, or is there a countdown? Or... Uh, up to you if you want to count down, or Bod Kate if you'd like to count down. Whatever your breath. I'll just go ahead and count down. So I'll start on go. Three, two, one, go. Go. So like I said, not a lot of glitches, but uh, we're gonna be skipping a lot of like. Uh, like we'll skip Black at two at the beginning, so we don't have to watch a cutscene. Hopefully, uh, clip through some walls, jump over some walls. But really, I mean, they're not too big of glitches. I'd say the only real glitches are like bomb clip, pretty much, which is the first star you get. <clears throat> yeah, the run actually starts off with two fairly difficult tricks. You start right away with with uh, a key to skip, where you have to land like on just a few pixels to the left of a. A uh, zone I would load, like a cutscene, where you have to talk to the guy. And then right after that is bomb clip, where you have to pick up a bomb and toss it. And then uh, you have to grab the bomb or pick it back up on one of only a couple frames. And then the bomb pushes you backwards with the like explosion force permanently. And then you use it to clip through the fence. So that was a successful Wakita skip by jumping on the left side of the um, railing on that bridge. Yeah, definite, definite confidence booster. It always hurts when you're doing like a marathon or a race run or something where you can't reset. And you mess up the first thing in the game and you lose. It doesn't lose that much time, it only loses 7 seconds, but it definitely yeah. hurts. It's pretty easy to miss it too. All right, so successful bomb clip as well. Yeah, I'm kind of sad. I was going to have another one of my friends on for commentary as well, but uh, I failed to understand the schedule. I thought the schedule was all in ESD <laughs> or something. I'm not even sure how I misread it, but I thought my run didn't start till 1 a.m. Uh, so yeah, one of my friends is going to probably be waking up from a nap in the middle of the night and wondering why he's not on the stream, but... Yeah. Time zones. <laughs> yeah. <No figure. laughs> Especially with the time change that happened earlier this month. I still never Oh, I know. <laughs> so here's um, Peach's slide. You actually do this start twice, but one, you'll do it once before completing Womp's Fortress and then afterwards. You do this really cool um, skip. Here we go! Did die in the slide, so that's a good sign. <laughs> that's a sure sign of a. Uh, no reset tilt if you jump over the side of the slide or like bonk and die. Yeah. <laughs> so here's Womp's Fortress, actually one of the hardest stages in the game. Um, it's it's not easy to die on it or in it, but the movement is all fairly difficult. Generally, when you're doing runs, you end up resetting here almost like most of the runs. Pretty lucky that it's one of the first stages. Feels amazing, man. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not too worried about much. most of the stars in this game. Uh, the Hunter coin in this stage is incredibly brutal, though. If you mess up anything, you'll mess up your cycle. And once you get off cycle, you start stressing out. And it's honestly pretty hard to uh, die on most stars, but Hunter coin is definitely one of them that uh, you can mess up on pretty easily. 
They didn't notice that. In, uh, testing. <laughs> yeah, it turns out uh, Mario doesn't really have any collision really when he's doing a ground pound animation, so you can kind of just phase yeah. through objects uh, if they move through you, which isn't really useful anywhere except for there. It can get you killed in places. <laughs> you can accidentally ground pound through the um, fire seat boss stage floor when it's tilted. Good. Another thing that might get me killed is the star order. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> kind of a strange star order here. Because now you're going to have to select the uh, first star each time. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not a big deal. I'm used to making this mistake. I'm more upset about missing the uh, movement there to the, the tower because the pro movement's pretty epic. So this is a um, texture setup here for cannonless. Normally you would use a cannon to break a piece off of that wall. Oh, I missed, missed it. But there's a backup star where you don't lose much time at all. Um, yeah, normally you use a cannon to shoot Mario and use his face to break the wall off, and then there's a star there. But if you line up, like, perfectly, uh, you can run off that plank, and Mario's hand will just barely touch the star without having to break the wall. I mean, you okay. just gotta sometimes break this with your face, so... <laughs> Yeah, very happy I got the second time. Luckily, I was doing 100 coin last, so I could still sort of back it up to something, but... It really hurt. It once is thing. not really a big deal at all. You don't lose much going for a while, please. But... It's like six seconds or something like that. So here's 100 coin. He's going for a cycle here. On one of the rotating oh. platforms. Uh. How did you get into a butt slide? I don't know. I'm scared. <laughs> Please hold me. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay, that didn't happen. It's okay. <laughs> Perfect cycle. That's Blue what coin. we're looking for. All right. Alright, made it past the one spot you can die. We're in every race, you have a minor panic attack when you're approaching it. It's not bad. Come on. Definitely didn't almost grab that star and ruin my run. <laughs> I'll give Oddkate a panic attack in about two seconds. Oh no. <laughs> that would have been so horrible. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, leaving that stage, not exactly the best time is 7.30 out of Womps is not amazing, but in a no reset, I mean, I wouldn't be too bad about it. Definitely worth continuing, even in like a PB attempt, honestly. Right, that sounds like my normal time. So hopefully we'll get a better time on this slide here. Really good slide time is anything under 13 seconds, so we'll see if I can do better this time. Oh, and the reason that you do this twice is that you get one star for just completing the slide, but you actually get a second star if you complete it in under 21 seconds. Um, which is kind of hard to do if you're just sliding down the slide like normal. But when you're doing that skip, it's obviously really easy. Yeah, unfortunately you didn't get the sub 13, but 13 is still pretty good. 13 on the dot. So next star we're going to is the wing cap, uh, which we do in a kind of weird order, we collect the coins in kind of a strange order in order to get more speed boost. And luckily I didn't miss one of those coins. It's really easy to miss one or both of those first coins, but after that it's kind of a cakewalk.
Yeah. And there's a little bit of a skip here you can do by uh, activating a switch uh, as we're jumping. We can hit the star and it skips an entire text box or two you have to scroll through. Uh, that just lets you know that all the wing cap boxes get activated. So just another one of those... You can call it a glitch, but really, I mean, this is the closest you get to a, a glitchless run. Mm -hmm. Nobody really runs, like, a legit glitches category in this game, because it's pretty much just 70 star minus a couple of tricks that are, like, pretty fun and not really game-breaking. Yeah. Yeah, there really only is just that bomb clip you saw at the beginning of the run, and then another trick with the bomb. And then a couple times where you like go through walls just by diving. It turns out diving not really a glitch. But uh, the game's just kind of programmed a little bit scarily. Kind of like the stage, a little bit scary. Yeah, Dark World is a... Uh... Dark World is a really scary stage. Any mistake you make is basically death. Right, but that was pretty good. Yeah, it's also cycle based. Yeah, you got a pretty good cycle too. Getting, getting Shig cycle in an Arisa is really a feels good man. Uh, Shigeru cycles, what you call when you hit that, uh, there's like a yellow block that moves in and out. And every cycle is basically based around that. So now's the first encounter with Bowser, and he dances for us. Okay, that's pretty rare. Yeah, isn't that one in the town? And I hit the bomb first try, which is also pretty rare. Uh, not exactly, <laughs> not exactly the best at throws. I use a third-party controller, which is absolutely cursed. I wouldn't recommend it to my worst enemy. But uh, N64 controllers are notoriously prone to breaking, um, since the joysticks are made of plastic that grinds on each other. So. Yep. Yeah, using a third-party controller is kind of required, and the optimal ones are like 60 to $90, so... Well, yeah, most players do switch from the N64 controller to some other controller specifically for just Bowser throws. Because of how I mean, you spin it. Yeah, this is definitely marathon PV pace, because I've never done a marathon before, but it's also PV pace, because my PV is not exactly optimized. I do a lot of no resets, so... Theoretically, we could still PB here. So this trick is actually really cool. You in this game you can like keep your momentum. So if you slide down slopes and then you jump and you do a triple jump, you'll keep all your speed and then it gets transferred into the cap speed. So you can fly right up to that star. Very cool tech. And definitely want to say very awesome Bowser fight as well. And something else that's incredibly awesome. Looks like we have a new PB for the Fastest Furs Marathon. Oh, Thank let's you so go. much, oh, Merm, yeah. for, Merm2, for another dollar donation sending us up and over. We are now at $8,076. Wonderful new PB. Merm2, here's some money for a great cause and to put you past that previous Don's record. You're all here for it, everybody. Now let's keep pushing that record higher and higher. Exclamation point donate in the chat. Let's keep it going. Awesome. Thanks everybody for all the donations. I was so happy about getting that one star that I almost left the stage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say that that, um, that wall kick that you saw him just do that backflip into the wall kick is is super easy star to die on. It's really easy to die on that star, so Yeah, I lost some time falling down and bonking, but Honestly, it's super not a big deal. It loses like three seconds compared to dying, which loses like 20. So, super happy. That's like one of the stars I'm most scared of, even though it's a 10 second star. Yeah, yeah, me too. I think most people are on, so. Toss the penguin. No, you will not toss the penguin. <laughs> I also noticed somebody was saying that uh, replacing the sticks are easy, and that is true, but most of the replacement sticks you'll find online are incredibly cheap and inaccurate, so they're not great for speedrunning. Um, yeah. It, there's some that are like, there's a lot of people that are working on trying to make really good, accurate replicas. Uh, but right now, there's really no options that are consistent or affordable. If you want a really good reproduction stick, it costs like hundreds and hundreds of dollars, unfortunately. But hopefully, soon we'll have a good one. 
because this controller is honestly one of the best ever made, even though it gets a lot of flack. Very true, I agree. I think it's comfortable. Everybody else doesn't think it's comfortable, but I mean it is. So now he's doing a hundred coin on this slide. There's two options for this stage, and one is to get this hundred coin here with the slide star, and the other is to get this hundred coin with the penguin race star and get the slide star separately. Um, doing this method without with the slide star and without the penguin race is is safer in this stage because the penguin race, if you miss a coin um, you're pretty screwed because you can't then you can't get one of the stars right away and you'll lose about a minute um, but it does mean that he has to do a more difficult star later on uh, and I'll let you know when that is yeah honestly I hate racing in the penguin and that's why I do this route it's kind of risky because the star you have to do later is pretty tricky as well but uh, I, I just find it to be more consistent. Also, one thing worth noting is the penguin can also fall off the slide and just die randomly and make it so you can't get the star. <laughs> yeah, at all. the penguin can, uh, funny. can <clears throat> jump off or yeah, it's, fall off. It's, it's very rare, but uh, whenever it happens, it's 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 definitely uh, not a feels good man. I've literally never even seen it. It's so rare. I saw someone have it happen to him earlier. It was getting retweeted around on Twitter really recently, like a couple days ago. So, it does happen. But not not really a reason to do CCM 17. Um, CCM 17 is actually faster in some occasions. If you do uh, the star later we're talking about, which is pillarless, if you do the faster variant, uh, which just got found about a year ago, uh, but it's significantly harder, and it's like three frame-perfect inputs in a row or something like that, which you have to do back-to-back. Uh, twice, so not a lot of people do that. Yeah. <laughs> Turns out the one of the hardest stars in the entire run can become a harder. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a lot of uh, upset people when that strat came out because Pillarus yeah. was already considered to be one of the harder stars that, at the time, nobody really wanted to do. Oh man, that's a dumb mistake. Um, <laughs> but. Scene? Yeah, <laughs> I jumped over to the ceiling. Oh. <laughs> what the heck? Yeah, it happens. I, I don't think I've ever actually done that, but uh, brain RNG. Hey guys, I I just popped in um just recently, but do I have a time for a couple donations? Absolutely. Awesome. So remember how I said that we broke a PB earlier? Well, we've just smashed that. I'd love to say a huge thank you for a $250 oh, donation from Fruity Waffles saying, awesome marathon. It's been a blast. Top lurk throughout a lot of it. So thank you so, so much there. And then an additional $150 donation from Team Fast and Burst saying, we're so excited on getting a new marathon PB and want to keep pushing it higher. Don't forget about our prizes and keep on donating. Can we get a 9K here? Looks like we are just within range of that, so let's see it keep going. But remember, when making those donations, go ahead and put it towards that stretch goal, Team Fastest First Party Game Stream, which will be happening at some point after the marathon as well. Definitely stay tuned on our social media. Go ahead and follow us on Twitter by, click, by type exclamation point Twitter in chat and following the link. Yeah, I definitely think 9k is possible. There's a lot of Mario left to play, so oh, yeah. I have high hopes. Definitely. Oh, so so what you just saw Saren do was the Pillarless trick, the extremely hard one. He's got to do it a second time here. Um, and that, that what just happened is really common, um, because you do only have one frame to pick that bomb up. You have to pick it up on the largest. Uh, well... You pretty much have to pick it up on the largest frame um, to get that maximum backward speed to get up the um, pyramid and clip in. That looks big. And then uh, you also have to dive back over like you saw him do, which extends the timer on the bomb's explosion. 
It's pretty weird and complicated. All right. That's a sigh of relief right there. That's definitely one of the harder parts of the run is getting that trick. Because once you start having the bomb blow up in your face more than once or twice, um, you start running out of backups and it starts looking like a let's play yeah. uh, on steroids. It is extremely lucky that there's two really fast backups for the for that strat in this stage. Like, yeah, I don't even so I don't even touch the ones with the the klepto bird. Um, you can back up to this star that I just got, um, but it's so risky. There's so many ways you can just die and fall into the sand. I always just back up to doing pillarless again, even though it's kind of a wonky backup. But we're heading into lava land here, which is another pretty tricky stage. There's a lot of complex stars in here. Um, a lot of places to burn your booty, and that is not a good way to keep Mario's health up. So hopefully I'll be able to keep Mario's uh, butt out of the lava for most of the run. Well, there's some places where you actually have to use the lava, like I think what you're doing now. Yeah, there are a few times. Um, which makes it a lot harder to manage your health if you accidentally hit the lava again, unfortunately. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> Luckily, coins heal you in this game. <laughs> oh, yeah, lots of things heal you. Surfacing and water heals you. Coins heal you. So the game gives you some options for sure. Oof, okay. That was not a good situation. Oh, I got a thirsty. Oh, man. I, I risked the backup there. You can either do a ledge grab instantly, or you can go for um, oh, no. a wall kick. But unfortunately, I got a I got a first frame wall kick, which uh, gives you it retains your speed and gives you bonus speed. So there's no way for me to go back and ledge grab the cliff. Yeah. It's kind of weird in this game. There's um when you hit the A button to do the wall uh, wall jump. What? <laughs> okay. I don't know how I died there, I'm not going to lie, but it gives us another opportunity to uh, do Lava Boost, so that's not even a problem. You got an invisible wall! <laughs> what? I've never seen that before. <laughs> it's okay, we get to do Lava Boost, which is fine anyways. It was the game giving us an opportunity. Luckily, if you die in like a sub zone, you spawn in the sub zone again. So you don't lose too much time for the death inside the volcano or the Yeah, that, that, that was a super weird death. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that, that invis wall was really bizarre. Might have to get the uh, Mario the scientist onto that one, because there's nothing above you that would create an invisible wall. No, but they're everywhere, so... Because usually what would create an invis wall is a moving platform, uh, or some sort of platform at all, but really all that there is above me is just like static platforms. Oh no, that's fine. Whew, okay. No more deaths in Lava Land, come on. <laughs> it's a scary stage. I said it was a scary stage, but it's not that scary. You're scaring me. I'm just trying to hype up the, uh, the pain possibilities. Keeping us on the edge of our seats there. Yeah. This triple bu uh, bully star is, um, it can go badly. And you can end up in, like, an eternal fight for the rest of your life if you're you know, making mistakes, but. Yeah, I had a pretty bad fight there. Uh, the hitboxes weren't quite nice to me, but it's okay. We and did an okay the, uh, the bullies start ignoring you. Yeah, like yeah, luckily the bullies mostly stayed focused on me and, uh, yeah, the hitboxes were not that mean. Sometimes they can just start bopping you around and they can team up on you, like tag team, and you're just getting bopped into the lava constantly. Yeah, they so can luck literally stun lock you. Luckily, uh, it didn't go too awry there. Um, feel free to pop in with donations whenever, by the way, if they ever come through, because this game is pretty much non-stop uh, action. There's really no big pauses, yeah. in except for in-between stars. Totally will, totally will. And again, everyone, thank you so much for donating everything that you have already and helping us reach all new PBs. Keep that donation going, and maybe we'll see that 9K. Super excited to see that happen. 
remember, we have a stretch goal that's out there. Make sure you go ahead and apply your donation to the incentive out there. And who knows? Maybe we'll have other stretch goals coming up. There's only one way to find out. I'm fortunate that I took that bonk there. Um, that's a really fun star to do and really cool to watch if you do it correctly. But uh, yeah. we're just going to forget that Lava Land ever happened and move on to uh, Dire Dire Docks. <laughs> Which has yep. some pretty pretty basic stars. Um, the hardest of them being the Manta Ray, and not not particularly because it's a you know difficult star technically, but uh, you have to swim through some rings, and the rings hitboxes are really weird and notoriously prone to just not giving you a uh, hit when you're swimming right through the center of them. Yeah, yep, those they're notorious. Everyone who plays this game knows about them. Everyone who plays this game has lost runs to them. But first up is the chests. And these chests are weird too. You you only really have to be looking at the chest, like towards the back of the chest. You don't even have to be in front of it, really. Yeah, it's really hard to explain. Barely but touch them or like swim past them without even touching them sometimes. If, if you swim, like if you're facing, like Mario's facing towards the back of the chest, like he's coming at it from the back, it won't open. But if you're, if you like back up on the chest and you're facing, like if you're staring at it, you'd be looking at the lock, you can still unlock it. It's, it's very strange the way they're programmed. Everything in this stage is just weird. Yeah. There's also a lot of lag. Oh yeah, there's a lot of lag reduction um, <laughs> coming up here. Um, N64 doesn't like to draw more than like seven polygons on the screen at one time, and apparently they used all the polygons uh, in the stage on this sub coming up, so we're going to try really hard not to look at the sub. Which means I have to basically face Mario at this wall here and just check out these clams. I'm going to be doing the back sub here. I, I was very tempted to attempt front sub, but I'm, I'm not very well practiced on it. It saves like one or two seconds, and you can go the opposite direction and jump up the front of the sub, but it requires uh, a really precise lineup as well as frame-perfect jumps, so definitely not marathon safe. So here's the Manta Ray star, and hopefully I'll get this first ring. Okay, so, so the first six rings are actually fairly forgi forgiving, but if you make any mistake, then those rings will they'll make you sad. Yeah, luckily we got are like sideways or something. Yeah, luckily we got it first try, but fire sea here, not easy. Uh, the red coin movement very tricky. We're gonna try to go for a very fast cycle here, but we'll see if I get it. Yeah, it's, it's really hard to get what's called Lava Boost Cycle. Um, we'll see later, there's like a scissor lift thing that expands. And if you nail all of the movement on the way over there, you can get Lava Boost Cycle. Uh, unfortunately, I got a ledge grab, so it's not going to happen. Whew, almost getting bullied, too. I think we can make Early alleys here. Pretty easy. That bully up there by that coin they said that can literally just eject from the stage with one hit. Alright, so that was a pretty good cycle. Um, luckily making an early cycle. We didn't get the super ultra fast movement, but we got pretty fast movement, so I'll take it. Definitely above average fire C for me. Ooh, need that coin. Can we see a BLJ just for funsies? I mean... I could, but I didn't validate my run, so... Yeah, BLJs are actually banned in the 70 star. I'm tempted, I'm tempted. There is a BLJ you can do in this stage, which is pretty sick, um, but it's incredibly hard. It's basically pass only. You only go for it if you're being a joker and trying to go for like an IL record or something. Which, fun fact, the Dark World IL is actually uh, crazy and has a BLJ in it now which is the first Bowser level. Oh no! Okay, that's the worst Bowser throw you can miss in the game. Uh, because it makes this platform rotate, and you have to wait for it to stop rotating before you can grab Bowser's tail again. 
This is the platform I was talking about earlier where you can accidentally like, ground pound through it. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, because it tilts. <laughs> if you ground pound right as it tilts up over you, you'll oh, just yeah. go through the ground and then die. <laughs> that is true. Which uh, I learned on my own in the run. Why were you ground pounding? <laughs> well, I used to ground pound when I jumped over Bowser when you slide down. Oh, no. And I do not do that anymore. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can see why. So I know the moment has way passed, but when we were look, trying not to look at the Seven Polygon sub, I did want to remind everyone that all revenue from Twitch subscriptions and cheered bits received during the Passes First Fall <laughs> Festival will be donated to the Trans Line. Get yourself some sweet PB modes, and don't forget to check to see if you've got a free Twitch Prime, or sorry, Prime Gaming subscription available too. Yeah, what BDF100 in the chat said, uh, English is faster for 70 star. Um, Japanese actually saves time in the intro, but there's a lot of text boxes and stuff that are actually faster in this uh, category in particular. But for Japanese, uh, Japanese is faster in both 120 and uh, 16 star. I think for zero, one, 0 and 1 star, it's a bit of a wash, but okay, I need all these coins. I don't know, I could miss one maybe. I don't know. Let's just get them. Let's be safe. I haven't been practicing the stage recently, so I'm kind of nervous about it. <laughs> I've been yeah, having this... some stage meltdowns. This oh! 100 coin star that he's doing now is also the highest RNG star on the game. And it's still not bad. It's not like horrible RNG wise, like some games are. The run is actually very minimal RNG all around. But this star, every once in a while, it can just decide to fling a coin way off the stage um, oh. but generally you would only lose a few seconds uh, for that anyway because there's a backup box at the end you can get um, yeah there's a couple backup boxes uh, but we're gonna try to avoid them as long as i get all these coins we should be okay okay no we didn't so i gotta get a backup box here which isn't a big deal and i'm getting amped but that's all right that's how life goes sometimes you just get amped at least you didn't get amps and then combo with the flame. Oh, oh, okay. Just trying to show off the box here. <laughs> Luckily, this backup box is literally right next to the uh, secret star, which we have to get uh, to finish our run anyways, so... Not a big that's deal. A, I mean, that's the star you're going for. A happy little shock, yeah. So I'm gonna go for the elevator star next. This one's a bit tricky because we go for after we call this elevator down, we're gonna go for some uh, wall kicks. Oh, okay. We have to make it up to the elevator first, though. A key element of calling the elevator is reaching the elevator. Okay. But yes, the wall kicks are very difficult because you have to get uh, an angle that lets you get on top of the platform at the end. Sometimes it can be tricky to get that. You're also on the timer. Okay. That was a really scary angle. I was really close. I had a good angle, but I was really close to the right platform. So I had to like hold back or sideways so that I didn't um, end up underneath the platform I'm trying to get on. So that was a bit scary because if you fall all the way down, uh, you have basically one shot to get back up with the same wall kicks or else you're not saving time. You're having to do the star all over again. So. Very happy we at least got that there. And this is a decent run for me. Um, got one more star here in this level, but it's... Now that I'm saying it's easy, I'm going to mess it up, but... Uh, oh, it's by the way, um, fun fact, the height that you jump into this painting is the height of the water when you enter the stage. So for this last star, you see that he enters the painting at a slightly higher water level and then he gets to boost off this. Skeeter there. Okay, pretty good movement. Here we go. That was clean. Right, so what Dry Old is done now, we're gonna head over to t uh, Tiny Huge Island. There's only three stars we want to get in here. Two of them are relatively easy, and the other one is... Uh, a nail biter to say the least. Very easy to die in quite a few places, uh, especially at the end, so we'll see what happens here. 
movement's no pushover either. Yeah, the stage is like either huge or miniaturized. So the miniaturized version of the stage is like Come on. pretty weird to maneuver. Like everything is all oddly close to each other. Yeah, unfortunately I missed uh, some really cool movement there. But as I said, very hard, especially in a reset, to pull that off. Um, but luckily I didn't die. Uh, there's there's one spot you can literally just run off. The camera is so weird, you can just like easily run off the stage. Uh, just because of the way the camera is rotating. But uh, yeah, luckily not taking any more dust since Lava Land, which I'm very happy about. As long as you don't die in this game, basically, you're having a decent run. At least up until like, I don't know, I would say like a 53 or 52 minute time. That's when you start really worrying about your, uh... okay. I need to talk a little bit less because I just totally <laughs> forgot my camera change there. Yeah, that's a scary spot. There's like a few places in this game where the camera just spins itself around uncontrollably. And if you're not prepared for it, like if you normally do a different camera, you can very easily just run off the side because the camera spins around, so the direction you're holding changes. And yeah. That particular place, if you fall off, you are losing a lot of time. That plank. Yeah, the one thing that uh, you realize really quickly about this game once you start running it is pretty much everything matters around the camera. Uh, if you have the wrong camera, you're going to be losing time. Oh, it's not optimal, but it's fine. Yep. Um, pretty much every setup in this game is just all about getting the same camera and then uh, either holding an angle on the joystick or timing an A-press. Um, there's really no like free ball on it. It's pretty much all set. Uh, movements until you start going off the rails and then you start having to uh, sort of freestyle it. Mm -hmm. Beaten up Toad. Yeah, Toad's our enemy. We have to. Some, <laughs> sometimes you just want to give up the star and you have to kind of show him who's boss. So here's a uh, interesting couple stars in this stage that you do where. You kind of just run into the mountain and then dive through it. And then you use this weird kind of interaction with water where if you fall into water, it like places you at the top of the water plane. So you dive into that water, or you dive through the mountain and hit that water like zone and it teleports you to the top of the water. And then you just hop out of the water and you're on the top of that mountain part. Yeah, it can be hard to get uh, consistently, unfortunately, but luckily there's a lot of backups down here we can go for anyways. Um, this red coin star can also be a pain, because these red coins are uh, not exactly in the most forgiving positions, but luckily it's a little bit of... Oh. Yeah, um, <laughs> if you're playing this on N64, you're going to be uh, losing some time for sure if you're not getting optimal lag reduction. But that one, okay. Had a little bit of a bonk, but backed it up pretty well, so I'm happy with there's, that. There's some really rare RNG on that star, too, where you can quite literally just be sniped by one of those um, little gopher dudes by whatever they're throwing. They can just snipe you sometimes, and they'll hit you, and you'll, like, bonk five times and fall off the stage. And there's not much you can do about that. <laughs> But that is, it's really rare for that to happen. But. I believe they're called Monty Moles, and we can correct Monty me moles. if I'm wrong. Yeah, I was going to say Monty Moles, yes. <laughs> <Pretty sure. laughs> I can remember. Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to remember all the uh, Mario names, especially with all the new ones they've like added in SMO and like Galaxy and all that. Like, They always give them some weird name. And they never tell you till the credits. At least in Mario World. Thankfully, we got the mountain clip there. I was starting to run out of backups. Starting to get a little bit scared, but uh, that'll work. And we got one more star. There isn't. So basically, on this last star, we're gonna ride a breeze up the mountain, 
um, which is the beginner strat for both those uh, stars that we did that clip for. And there's actually a really uh, high level strat called Breezeless, where you do a triple wall jump wall kick, uh, kind of where I'm at right now. Uh, similar to the Owl star we saw in uh, Lost Fortress, where we did a triple jump and then wall kicked into the cage. But it's incredibly precise, and most people don't go for it till they get at least like a 48 minute time or so. Which yeah, is that, really That helpful. actually is one of the hardest tricks. Like, that you could even possibly do. And it's pretty minimal time save, so. Speaking of hardest stars in the game, uh, Snowman's Head. Yes. <laughs> this. The only way I can describe this is that it literally is slippery. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know what to say. Like, just something about it just makes it super difficult. Yeah, I mean, as you can see, I, I, I was trying to get on top of the head and it just rejected me completely. So we'll go for a different star and try to do it uh, better next time. Um, one thing also to note is I'm getting this red coin star here, which is a pretty fast star. There's a faster star we can uh, do in tick tock clock the last stage of the game which is the 100 coin star and we pair it up with another star which saves like anywhere from two to five seconds or so depending on your movement um but in order to save that time you have to do it incredibly fast it's one of the hardest stars in the game so people it's, a, it's another one of those you just don't add until you're pretty good at the game yeah. Yeah, if you watch any races of this game High level runners, you'll often see the lead change on that star that, that we're skipping here. Alright, that was a really good snowman set, so I'm, yeah, I'm glad that, that we went for the backup. That looked awesome. That was dope. Nicely done, nicely done. Just what really quick want to squeeze in a $10 donation from Theroa saying, I don't have much to give, but I love Sarah Mew. Give up the good work. <laughs> Great comments. <laughs> Thank you, Theroa. I love you too. <laughs> Appreciate you uh, chipping in a couple bucks. I know that the cause is a good one. I don't know a whole lot about Trans Lifeline, but uh, I've been reading up on them a little bit, and it seems like they do some pretty good work for the uh, trans community. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, once again, this is for festival is raising money indeed for Trans Lifeline since. 2014, Trans Lifeline's hotline has evolved from an entirely volunteer-run operation into a comprehensive resource that employs trans people working in a variety of roles. Hotline operators have logged thousands of hours assisting the trans community and are committed to being a reliable resource for years to come with your support. For more info, visit translifeline.org. Okay. So I was supposed to continue diving there and it's actually pretty funny to listen to. He just kind of uh, repeats his taking damage sound until he falls off the cliff. But I yeah. uh, did a little bit of a rollout, so we kind of improvised a little bit. But still on pretty good pace. Uh, we're going to enter this stage here and head into the basement. This is actually a relatively new route that was uh, found to be like one or two seconds optimal. Uh, over, We used to do this stage coming up Hazy Maze Cave earlier on in the run, so we would do it right after Lethal Lava Land. Um, but if we go and we do upstairs first, exit course, head downstairs, uh, we can collect the star from the rabbit, which is quite a bit faster than um, doing the Toxic Maze star in Hazy Maze Cave. So we skip one star in a stage, and this is just an easier route overall, and it saves time. So pretty much everyone has switched to this route by this point. Except yeah. for a, a few stubborn gamers have stuck with the late route, or the early route, rather. You might be thinking that he already collected that star, um, but Mips appears twice. He appears once when you get 15 stars, and another time when you get 50 with a second star. Yeah, very charitable rabbit. Unfortunately, uh, Mario kind of just beats up all sorts of characters in this game and steals their lunch money, but... You know, we gotta do it to save the princess, so... So here's a fun trick. Uh, where you triple triple jump off this box, and you literally just jump over the wall of the level. <laughs> yeah, unfor Mario's spine. yeah, unfortunately I took a level 7 bonk there because I missed the star a little bit, but uh, 
the animation for full fall damage is super funny. Yeah, it turns out Mario uh, cannot take a full force blow to hit the ground from uh, 500 feet up, but sometimes you gotta abuse a plumber. But yeah, they, they, there's no ceiling in this cave. They just have the black um, background basically make up the cave ceiling. So if you get high enough, you can jump right over the walls. Whoa, we just got a raid from Gambit017. Thank you so much for the raid, everyone. Uh, for those just joining in, you're watching Fastest Furs Fall Festival, raising money for Trans Lifeline. Just got a couple awesome donations here. $14 from Oasis saying, let's even that number out. Ah, uh, much better. But that just got <laughs> upped by BDEF donating $50, saying Sarah oh. and Odd Kate Poggers. <laughs> Thank you, Vita. So there you see him jump right over the wall again. Uh, star is known as Christmas Miracle because you can, from the very top where he jumped over, you can actually land on that switch and press it right away. Fun fact but, about that, it's, it's actually called Christmas Miracle uh, because people didn't really know how it works, so whenever they got it, it would be considered a Christmas Miracle when it happened. Right. But uh, since then we've kind of figured out it's it's dependent on your height when you uh, when you dive when you hit or where you hit the switch. Um, but yeah, um, for some reason Nintendo wasn't really great at programming their early 3D games. Turned out uh, nobody really made 3D games before. But I guess they didn't really think ceilings were necessary. You know, backward speed. Who cares about that? You can just get infinite. It's all good. Um, an ocarina of time. The door that leads to the master store literally has like a five inch gap that you can jump through there's there's just a lot of things in early 3d nintendo games where they just quality yeah, control I mean, really wasn't up to par as to what it is today i could imagine that it would be really challenging for them back then yeah i mean especially when you're you don't have like all the tools we have now to create games you yeah. just have like you know, they sent out a development kit and you gotta figure out how to use it and also make the world's first 3D games. Yep. But we're heading into Tippy here, which is the two hardest stars or two hardest stagers in the game. So we'll see if I'm able to uh, not die. Alright. Remember right here starts with a very precise trick where you basically force this enemy into that spot so you can bounce off of them and land on that ramp that exists for no known reason. <laughs> it's just there. Yeah, Nobody not, knows why it's there. It's not, so weird. Yeah, why is that it's why is that cold? not used for anything ever in the level. <laughs> it's just there. <laughs> but luckily it's there. They just knew the lack of bounce was gonna happen. Cool. They just knew it. They were like yeah, I know. We, they programmed it in. <laughs> And we got a super evil donation from Ian Keith. Seven dollars says my poor wallet says no, no even numbers. Supper. <laughs> so we're now at eight thousand five hundred fifty-seven of seventy-five. I'm sorry, of our twenty-five hundred goal. Can we reach nine k? Yes, we can. I believe. I like I believe in speedrun. This is pretty sick. Uh, this that was is a, a hella crazy. good reds. Yeah, I'm very happy with how this rainbow ride's going. We'll see if I can curse that and uh, die here on the triple jump wall kick. Yeah, you shouldn't have said anything until you left the stage. <laughs> so that... Uh... Even just that triple jump wall kick that he did at the beginning of those three last stars is just, it's one of the easiest things to make a very minimal mistake on. You just fall to your death. So, really good stage so far. This next one coming up is cycle based. It's not too hard to get the cycle, but it's also very easy to make it. Like an easy mistake on at this time. Yeah, there's not a lot of room to stand. You're basically jumping from one like few pixel wide platform to another, but somehow I kept it together. So we're heading into TTC on pretty good pace here. Um, Did you gold that? 
Oh, you're I, not using splitters. <laughs> yeah. you, you probably would have, though. That was, like, super clean. Yeah, that was one of my best rainbow rides ever, for sure. Which means that the TTC is going to be incredibly cursed, but... Um, we'll see what happens. Nah, you got this. A favorite thing for you to hear him say. So this stage, um, fun fact about when you enter it, it has differences on how the level moves. So if you enter it with the hand at the 12, the stage is frozen and it doesn't move, um, which makes obviously makes it much easier to do some stars in here. Um, like, imagine if red coins couldn't be frozen. <laughs> Yeah, doing moving reds is becoming more and more popular, but I can't see myself adding that anytime soon. No, <laughs> that's a horrible place to fall. Ah. <laughs> it's okay. So you can you can enter the stage with the time frozen, or you can enter the stage with the time moving slowly, or with the time moving fast, or, or with the time random. randomly <laughs> moving all of the items around separately. <laughs> yeah. Which you do not want. <laughs> Yeah, we'll do our best to avoid that. <laughs> so here, he enters the glitch with time moving. Uh, missed at that time, got a hilarious bonk, but... You do that, you do the moving strat three times, so we'll see if we can get it next time. Yeah, really hard strat. Um, it's hard to get in... Like a run. If you just like spam resets in a level doing practice, it's not too bad, but once the pressure's on and you only have one shot, it, it, everything becomes harder. No, how did I not? Oh, come on. That was tragic. Oh, how did you even get. You okay. got multiple butt booty slides this run, and I have no idea how you got them. Yeah, it's not a huge deal. Pretty unfortunate. Um, even missing that, it's not that bad. Um, it's it's better to enter the clock moving and do these stars moving regardless of whether you get that uh, fancy flipper strat or not. Uh, because you don't have to sit out and wait for the clock to turn to a certain time. You're just heading in pretty much directly when you get up here rather than waiting a couple seconds. So I have one more shot at this. All right, there we go. Hell yeah, that's a super cool trick. Land it. Yeah. We're on pretty good pace here, though. I think I could potentially get. I want to say a 55, but it's gonna be close. Super cool, and the run has been looking awesome. I do want to shout out a couple of donations. Wow, meaning sick are saying hashtag Team Chaos, hashtag Team Primes, hashtag Konami, and then an additional forty-three dollars from Fruity Waffles, saying in need pretty numbers. Though with all of those combined, at eighty-six sixteen. Yeah, the even number gang kind of getting uh, trampled right now, unfortunately. As soon as it gets evened out, there's too much generosity going on right now. Let's keep that generosity going. We keep hitting PB after PB after PB. Let's keep it on going. Can we get 9k hype in the chat? This is actually my favorite star in the game. It is really fun to watch. You do a wall kick at the end where you no. kind of slingshot and oh, no, 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 no. not <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> oh man. It's tragic. Uh, Alright, well, this time it'll look good. Yeah, this, this that, was, uh, that was just... I just intentionally fell off there because I wanted to do it strong. Right. It's like lava boost. Nice. 
A triple jump right there is really hard. Yeah, actually. You could do a little bit of extra maneuvering in the air to land it at you. So the triple jump is a little bit janky, but everything else is pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. So 55 is still alive as well, so that's good. Clock position does matter uh, when you go in. If you go in when it's at 12, uh, the time is stopped. So for a couple of stars, you want it stopped. Um, you can also go in and have it moving fast. <laughs> I, was gonna gonna do I got a, I got a cursed angle, so we'll just we'll just abandon it. Pretend like that never happened. <laughs> no cheating allowed. All right, so the last stage here, you don't have to collect red coins. Luckily, because that would be awful. Yeah, the red coins in the stage are not really like in the beaten path. You kind of have to go out of your way for them. And some are blocked off by fire. Some are just like in weird areas. Uh, some are like right next to the cliff where you just fall down and die. So. <laughs> but a really fun stage, technically. Oh yeah. So you got left side. That that's like the last big trick in the run. Um, it can really screw you over though. Sometimes, sometimes you're on PB pace where you have to do that because you're only a couple seconds ahead and then you fail it and it's over and it's really sad. But now is final Bowser. We have three throws. Wow. And it's kind of like you did all your epic movement and now you play a little mini game. And the mini game is really hard and not for you. Yes. <laughs> Landing throws is not. Easy. Um, a lot of people who watch play the game think it looks easy. It is not easy. That was pretty good for me. I don't go for a crazy pop and strat. I'm but... really glad the floor didn't fall out from under you. And we're gonna get <laughs> so that's a pretty good race time for me. I'm pretty happy. Awesome. Well done. Dude. So it was 55 39. Uh, not sure if we got the time there. Sorry. Nicely done. All right, excellent. So, Sarah, that was an amazing run. Okay, thank you so much for the commentary. Any uh, thoughts that you'd like to share or any um, tips for folks that are looking to be get involved with the Super Mario 64 speedrunning community? Um, if you want to get involved with the community, I guess the uh, number one thing you could do is check out a website called ukikipedia.net. I don't know if I can link that in the chat, but... Uh, there's an RTA guide, a real-time attack guide on there that will show you the route. It will show you beginner, intermediate, advanced movements. Um, pretty much everything you need to know and learn to get into the game. Okay, I'll post it in the uh, Discord in the runner chat. Uh, but yeah, that's basically, that's, that's, that's the best way. Um, Let's see if I can find the RCA guide specifically. I everything, you, everything you'd ever need to know will be on that site, though. Yeah, everything you need to know, and then literally just go into any Mario 64 speedrunners chat and ask questions, and 99% of the community will be down to help you out. If not on the spot, they can find somebody to help you. Uh, it's a pretty helpful community. A lot of good people in it, so I definitely highly encourage anybody who likes this game or even just has a basic interest in playing it at all uh, to just get involved just watching the streams it's, it's a really good inclusive community there's a lot of events uh, surrounding it where you know community races and stuff like that so definitely worth trying out yeah there's there's actually quite a lot of tournaments happening almost all the time for this game it's pretty awesome um, yeah and there's a category called 16 star uh, which is very easy to get into playing uh, it's about probably 25 minutes long when you start, 25, 30 minutes long when you first start, so. Yeah, it's a little so. bit more glitch intensive, but 16 star is honestly my favorite category. It's, there's a lot of cool glitches and you get to uh, show off some pretty fun movements, some really fast stars. Awesome. Great, excellent. So if there's anything else, I want to thank one, thank you once more again, Sarah Mew, for an amazing Super Mario 64 run.